What's up, church? So story time. I had somebody who I really respected. We had a disagreement and they said, what I'm doing on my YouTube channel is borderline gossip. There's no borderline gossip. Either you're gossiping or you're not. And somebody who I respect, they come up to me and, and let me know something like that. I am going to research it for myself and figure out, hey, am I right or am I wrong? So this is what inspired the video. I did research and the truth is, what I'm doing is not gossip. What really is gossiping? We're going to find that out today. I have four scriptures, not one, not two, not three, four scriptures about gossip that we're going to discuss. This is the NIV, and I chose the NIV because other translations don't use specifically use the word gossip, and we're talking about gossip, so I want to use a translation that actually uses the word gossip. Proverbs 11:13. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Proverbs 26, 20. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Proverbs 26, 22. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. 2 Corinthians 12, 20. For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you. And this is the New Testament. The other ones are Old Testament. This is the Hebrew. In the Old Testament, this is going to be in the Greek, the New Testament. Second Corinthians 12, 20. For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want to be. And you may not find me as I want, as you want me to be. I fear that there may be a discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. All right. So we are in the Hebrew. We're going to start with Proverbs eleven thirteen. 13. The gossip betrays confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. So, Blue Letter Bible. This is Strong's H7400, and he's, it's pronounced Rakil. Rakil. So, the root word, it comes from um, a different word, which means a scandal monger. And it's found, you know, a couple times in the KJV and other scriptures. Uh, tell bearer, carry tell, slander. Slander. So, the word here in this scripture is. The outline means slander. And slander, we know, is actually a legal term. A legal term meaning you're talking lies about somebody. And you could actually be sued for slander. So slander is lying. Talbert informer. So Strong's definition, a scandal monger is traveling about. Slander, carry tales, talebearer. All this has to do with falsity. So we're actually going to look up the definition of slander. <laughs> I'm going super in-depth, y'all. The action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. It's considered a crime. The action or crime making a false, false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. All right. Tell bearer, person who maliciously gossips or reveals secrets. And these are just scriptures, the concordance. Um, it shows uh, how that same root word, how that same strong number, 87400, the same Hebrew word that we just went over, Rakil, is used in other scriptures. Um, let's go over a couple. Gossip betrays the confidence, but trust where the person keeps a secret. That's actually the one I just said. A gossip betrays confidence, so anyone who talks, so avoid anyone who talks too much. That's in Proverbs as well. And let's move on from that. It's just an example of how that same word, same Hebrew word, was used in different scriptures. Now we're going to Proverbs 26, 20. This is the second one. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Now this is a different word, but it means a very similar thing. Think of it as like a, a synonym. Near gone. Near gone. From an unroot, unused root, meaning to roll to pieces. And this is the Jesenius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, a chatterer, a garrulous person, hence a whisperer, calumniator. Don't worry, we're going to go over what those means, that those uh, words means, garrulous, calumniator. Because I didn't know, I didn't know at first. Garrulous, excessively talkative, especially on trivial, trivial matters. Okay, so what I do and what other people do on my YouTube channel are what I only have my YouTube channel, but what I do on my YouTube channel, other people do on their YouTube channel. If they're calling out false teachers, false prophets in a way that's edifying to the church, it's not about trivial matters. It's not trivial because if we're doing it 
um, in the way that God wants us to do it, meaning not just attacking the person and saying, oh, this person is evil, I hate this person, and not actually giving an explanation of what's needed to be done according to God's word, which I do give explanations in my videos. It's not trivial. Okay, so an example of a trivial matter, it would be, all right, let's think about Mike Todd. He's like a really famous false teacher right now. I don't care about name calling. I don't. And let's say, you know, he's driving. I don't know what car he drives. Let's just say he drives a Ferrari. He's got the money to have a Ferrari. You know, he's enjoying his car and he he gets a ticket. He's, he goes 15 miles an hour above the speed limit. And I'm like, I make a video. I'm like, you know, Mike Todd, uh, he just got a ticket for going 15 miles over the speed limit. You know, this dude, he shouldn't be preaching. <laughs> he shouldn't be preaching. Uh, he's got a speeding ticket. And um, what, what was he thinking? This dude doesn't care about the law. He doesn't care about following the, the laws of the land. You can't trust him. You know, <laughs> that would be totally gossip. It would be trivial. That's a trivial matter. Now we'll, f we'll flip the script here. And let's use another analogy. I love analogies. Let's say Mike Todd is in the same Ferrari. He goes 60 miles per hour above the speed limit, uh, almost kills somebody. And when he stops and gets out his car, he, he parks in a parking lot somewhere, you know, getting groceries. He sees somebody that goes to a church. Uh, the guy's like, you know what? Hey, Mike Todd, what's up? I like your sermons. I love your sermons. And Mike Todd just like, hey, um, guess what? You know what? You drive a Honda. Why are you even talking to me right now? You drive a Honda Accord. I just got my brand new Ferrari. It's fast. Your Honda's slow. And, and you're broke. Okay, that moves from being, that's not trivial anymore. That's a serious matter. That's sin. Uh, and it's sin to a high degree. Dude almost killed somebody going 60 miles per hour with a speed limit. Let's say in a school zone to make it even worse. <laughs> okay, and um, he just really disrespected somebody, you know, comparing uh, his car to somebody else's car. Just straight disrespect and was uncalled for. That moves from being trivial to, to serious and something worthy of talking about. So that was a little tangent talking about garrulous because gossip, um, one, one of the definitions that we just went over, garrulous, calumniate, 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 whatever. Make false and defamatory statements about. So here we have a repetition here. Gossip has to deal with falsity defamatory statements, similar to slander. All right, next we're going to go over Proverbs 2620. Okay, so the KJV count is four times, uh, talebearer, whisperer, and the outline of biblical uses here is to murmur, whisper, murmurs, backbite, slander, talebearer, tail bearer, backbiter, near gone from an unused root meaning to roll to pieces of slanderer, talebearer, whisperer. The definition of a backbiter, because, you know, that's not really a word that we use in English regularly. I think it's more so old English. So it means one who attacks the reputation of another by slander, by slander or libel. Both are legal terms and both, I believe you can get sued for. I know slander can. Libel, I think so as well. So these, again, have to deal with falsity. Concordance of this um, Hebrew word, H5372, matches with four different verses. A perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels that go down to the inmost parts. That wood of fire goes out without a gossip, a quarrel dies down, which is the one we just went over. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels that go down to the inmost parts. Okay, so this is Proverbs 26, 22. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. This is using the same Hebrew word as the previous scripture, Nergon. And we, we already went over that one, so we just don't want to repeat that. But I just want to show you the same root word in this scripture as the previous one. Okay, so now we're into the Greek. This is New Testament, 2 Corinthians 12, 20. For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be. And you may not find me as, I, as you want me to be. I fear that there may be discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. So what does the root Hebrew word for gossip mean here? Now it's pronounced, I'm going to try to do this, persitherimos. That's my best, that's my best attempt. 
So from a derivative of pisados, a whisper by implication, a slander. Here we go. Slander again, probably akin to this other root Greek word. A whispering, i.e. secret slandering of the magical memory of a charmer of snakes. Strong's definition from a derivative of that other Greek word, a whisper, which we're going to go over that. By implication, a slander, probably akin to G5574, secret detraction. This is the root word of this word. Persithemos is a derivative of this one. Persudodom, i.e. Persudodomi whatever. Okay. It means to lie, to speak deliberate falsehoods. Here we go again. Falsity, lies, gossip is synonymous. To deceive one by a lie, to lie to. Pseudomai, middle voice of an apparently primary verb to utter an untruth or attempt to deceive by falsehood, falsely lie. Vine's Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words to deceive by lies is used in the middle voice translate to say falsely. It is elsewhere rendered to lie. And that's some of the other scriptures that it's used in. And this right here is a very important point. Pseudo. Let's go back to the actual word. Pseudo. Uh, pseudo. Dom, I. It starts with pseudo. This is where we get our English language for pseudo. Think of this. Pseudoscience. A lot of people use that in conjunction. So. Pseudoscience means false science. Pseudo means false. And this is a concordance here. It matches a good bit of other scriptures that Greek word is used in Matthew, Acts, Romans, um, 2 Corinthians. Romans 9 1 says, I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying, which is where that Greek word is for lying. Pseudo, pseudoami. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians eleven thirty one. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. Pseudo Ami. G5574. Pseudo Ami. Conclusion. It's not gossip if you're speaking the truth. As we just described, we just found out that gossip is synonymous with lying, slander, pseudo Ami, falsity. It's not gossip if you're speaking about a public event where the details slash facts are already known. It's not gossip if you are exposing deception and edifying the church by discussing the seriousness of sin, which is what I do on my YouTube channel. God actually wants hypocrites in the church to be exposed. And I will definitely discuss this in a later video of why God wants us in examples in the Bible of people of God exposing sin in the church, exposing hypocrites, and why it's actually needed to expose false teachers, false prophets, and more on what type of behavior should Christians not be engaging in. It's necessary for the church for this discussion to be had. Ooh, and here is the cherry on top. Miss J, a wonderful woman of God, sent me a voice note. Um, I told her the whole story about somebody coming to me, insinuating that I'm gossiping what I'm doing on my YouTube channel. And uh, she sent me this voice note. We're going to just listen to it here. She actually probably could have done this presentation <laughs> and it might have went better than how I'm doing it. She might have described it better than I did. It was so good. I said, look, Miss J, can I, can I put this in my video? She was like, okay, cool. So here we go. Because whoever who commented the whole, what you're doing is like gossip. Let's just take a moment of silence for that person <laughs> because that doesn't even make logical sense, okay? No logic in that. And the reason being is because, okay, so I even pulled up the um, definition of gossip according to the dictionary. And the definition of gossip is casual or unconstrained conversation or reports about other people, typically involving details that are not confirmed as being true. Okay. There we go. Details that are not confirmed as being true. When I'm talking on my YouTube channel and when others are doing it, who are doing this in the right way, we're speaking on details that are true, that are confirmed as being true, that are put out there. So this is already debunked because the details that you are sharing your take on from a spiritual perspective are confirmed to be true. Did Chandler Moore 
um, make that post? Yes, he did. Is there proof? Yes, there is. It's on his Instagram. Lecrae, did Oof. Lecrae say what he said? Yes, he did. Is there proof? In the interview he did on a public platform, okay? Which brings me to the second point because gossip is um, it's something that, like, basically you're sharing personal or private affairs of other people, okay? Yes. That's the, another part of gossip. Which is already debunked because what these people have said or what these people have shared is not personal or private. It's literally shared on a public platform. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. It's public. They put it out there, y'all. So everybody can see it and everybody is open to opine on it, to give their take on it or whatever. You just happen to have a YouTube channel where you can share your views on it on a more public platform. But whenever they decided to click that post button, whenever they decided to do that interview with cameras in their face, they decided to say what they had to say or show what they had to show on a public platform. So it's not like you're taking their personal private stuff and blasting it on the internet the stuff was already there you just happen to share your take on it um, from a spiritual perspective based off of the objective of your youtube channel so whoever is um even making those claims they can go sit down because that makes no no sense and Uh, even um i'll also add the hebrew word for gossip is actually translated as one who reveals secrets one who goes about as a tale bearer or scandal monger. Yeah. How can you, how can you monger scandal that has already been put out there by the original person? She is going in. Uh, look. <laughs> who did the deed. Okay. So that makes no sense. Um, yeah, um, I could go on and on. I mean, it's also a gossiper is also a person who has privileged information about people and proceeds to reveal that information to those who have no business knowing it. Um, the person who did the deed has already revealed their information. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. They're a public figure. It's, that's why it's fair game to talk about stuff that they're doing. This is not gossip. On to the next thing. That person's canceled. Yo. <laughs> canceled. Wow. Um, look, I forgive the person that, that said that to me. I think they said that out of the flesh. I think they said that out of emotion. I realized that when you speak about somebody who another person likes and is more loyal to than you, so they're more loyal to this public figure or this, um, this role model than they are to you, and you speak about them, in a way that they don't like, they will kind of distance themselves from you. They will probably not like you anymore. Um, I would say if they're more immature, if they're more immature, if they're mature, they would see if what you're saying is true and actually act on those facts that you're speaking about. But if they're immature and you're speaking facts and truth and they don't like what you're saying about their role model or their person that they look up to with high regard, their loyalty to that person that they look up to in higher regard than you, their loyalty comes first and they will not like you anymore. And I realized that recently because I'm doing that. I'm speaking about people, uh, people's role models. They're people that a lot of people look up to in high regard, which I don't know how, like a Mike Todd or, well, Chandler Moore, I can see that. He's almost like poster child. Chandler Moore is like the golden child, it seems like, of the church. Like he, everybody loves Chandler Moore. So when I spoke about Chandler Moore and said things that people didn't like, they didn't like me anymore because they look at Chandler Moore in high regard. So, hey, but it should be about truth, right? It should be about truth as Jesus is a truth. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And as Christians, we should put Jesus first. We should put the truth first, right? Yes. Amen. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. You know what? If you want to stay updated with my videos, definitely subscribe to my channel. 
hit the notification bell. Ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> no, all the YouTubers do that. Like the video to push it out to the algorithm. And hey, guess what? I'm going to start going live more. So subscribe to catch my live streams. I usually do it at 1 p.m. when I do do it. And I'm currently doing it two days per week on Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Saturday is a Bible study. Friday is just talking about, you know, whatever the topic is, the current event or something else. But I appreciate you for getting to the end and y'all have a blessed day.